Hi guys, it's Natalie Zangon with a video of mine. Um, so I wanted to do this video on the laws of family purity and counting and how do you go about the counting. I've realized over the years that I've occasionally have taught the Tara Tamishbacha classes or taught the students one on one that women have different meaning for different words and we got to be very very careful when we talk about these laws and making sure that we clarify how we're teaching it and what we mean by it um i've been married thank god for many years now um and in the beginning i also like had a hard time with myself what does it mean how do you do it like how do you actually do the counting so let's explain that basically from the onset of the menstruation, Sephardim have a minimum of four bleeding days that need to count. That's the minimum. And Ashkenazis have five minimum of days of bleeding days. So in order for them to start counting the counting, seven counting days, they need to have a minimum of four menstruation days. So menstruation Days, we're talking about active discharge of blood from the uterus. So this is the active blood. This is the active blood discharge. So some women have a misunderstanding of what it is, and let's just explain that. So from the time that your uh, your flow starts, your uh, blood flow starts, you start counting your days. And the Jewish calendar day starts from the evening. So if the woman's blood flow starts Monday after sundown, then Tuesday becomes day one. But if the flow starts Monday morning, then Monday becomes day one because the day starts from the evening before. So let's say the flow of the discharge started Monday daytime. So this woman needs to count minimum of five bleeding discharge, like active bleeding. So minimum of, let's just for Sephardim counting, let's say four. So you count Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Technically, Thursday afternoon before sundown, she could do the, her half sec tahara to go on to the counting days. Here's where the situation gets complicated. So when you tell girls when you stop um, bleeding or when you see nothing, when it's clear, then you start counting. These are very dangerous to words to use, especially for groups of women that are perfectionists or men, their spouses that are perfectionists, very clean, very orderly. They'll think of the word clean, meaning when the bedika cloth looks like this. They will. This is what they'll understand as clean, clear, nothingness. That's what they understand it. But that's not exactly what we are looking for. What we're looking for is the stopping of the blood flow. So when you stop seeing the burgundyish red color, bright red rose color, when you no longer see the bright red rose color, that's when you can start going into your seven counting days. And I don't like to call it seven clean days again, because like I told you, for the OCD perfectionist um, type A personality, they think that this is what the Bedika cloth needs to look like which is not the case. The best thing to do is that you need to have a rabbi or a kala teacher that you check with them. You send a picture of it, you show them what it looks like, and they will tell you whether um, you could continue to check or not. So the color, as you can see, you know, the active blood color, which is like the red, like the bright red, you know, um, kind of lighter than red wine, that's active blood. You know, there's different stages of blood. What happens is when a woman starts her menstruation cycle, that means the uterus lining is shedding. There was no fertilization. There was no pregnancy. So the uterus lining that was getting prepared to become the placenta, to become the lining for the embryo to implant in, realizes there's no need for it, so it calms down. The period blood is the blood from the uterus. So when the woman is doing her checking, she's checking inside the cervix to make sure the flow has stop then there is no more bleeding to go into her seven counting days so as i said you need for sephardim a minimum of four ble uh, bleeding days you know you need to count the minimum of four there is no around it like according to our of, of idea yourself it's four and after that you turn into the seven counting days 
So the night that you do your hafsek tahara, seven seven days after is when you go to the mikveh. So if she does her um, hafsek tahara Thursday night, checks the color with the rabbi and it's okay, the following week, Thursday night, she'll go to the mikveh. <laughs> So as I said to you, so let's say if she's doing her um, hefsek tahara, her checking into the counting days, that's what I look to call it instead of the clean days, clear days. When she does her hefsek tahara, Thursday daytime is a good time for you to take a shower, wash yourself, clean the area, you know, do everything that you need to do to completely um, get rid of any other residue or discharge. And then you could do another one throughout the day. You could shower, bathe, do whatever you need to take care of to clean the area. And then if you have the time, an hour before you do the official half sector, do another checking. And then before sundown, like 10, 15 minutes before sundown, you do your next checking with the bedika cloth that you simply put in on your finger. And you check within the canal to just make sure everything the blood flow has stopped and then you just leave the cloth and wait till the next day and then the next day you do your the first bedika so you need to have seven counting days so you do the next one the next day and god willing when it's all um done properly and the colors are fine you just continue counting so there are rabbanim there that you can reach out to you leave the cloth there and even if you see a discharge on a panty panty liner or you see it on the underwear you could show it to them and they will tell you whether this means the flow has stopped continue to count or no they tell you this looks like active blood so just make sure to understand that when it says when you're clean clean doesn't mean clean like nothingness it means when there's no longer an active discharge of blood and the way you find that out is by asking the rabbi, by sending a picture maybe to your kala teacher, by finding out who's the rabbi in your community that can answer this question. There are many, many couples that I'm dealing with that are missing their ovulation because they're not counting correctly. They're not sure exactly when they can count or when they shouldn't count. It's very, very good idea to consult with someone who specializes in this area and find out. And especially for women after the age of above age 30, 35, if you're trying to get pregnant and things are not happening, talk to your rabbi. It's a very good idea to speak to a specialist just to figure out what's going on. Time is everything with a woman's body and her ovulation. Time is everything. You have valuable potential, you know, um, eggs inside of you that as you get older the quality and things change within the woman's body so once as you get uh, if you're getting married and you're older it's always good to check into and find out what's happening what's going on and to learn more about your body and everything else so as i said to you the active nida blood that we're thinking of the active actual flow is the bright red color and after that you check with your rabbi or kala teacher to see if the flow has stopped and going into the counting days. Thank you so much for watching. This is Natalie Zangon at gmail.com.